All right, y'all. Yo, lo- I long told y'all about the racist Republicans in North Carolina. I mean, they have done everything they can to talk about dis- disenfranchise and degrade black people. But we saw yesterday, again, that racism on display. Uh, this took place just yesterday uh, on the floor in North Carolina. Uh, and folks, talk about just utterly ridiculous. Uh, I'm just going to so I'm just going to play this. Okay, this is Representative uh, Abraham Jones. He's interrupted by Jeff McNeely with this stupidity. Watch, Mr. Speaker. Can I ask the representative a question? Uh, representative Jones, does the gentleman yield to a question from the gentleman from Iredell, Representative McNeely? I absolutely will yield. Yes, he sir. Is. Representative Jones, I, I want to ask you the question is, I understand that you went into public school and you went to Harvard and Harvard Law. And the question, I guess, is, uh, would you have been able to maybe achieve this if you were not an athlete or a minority or any of these things, but you were a student trapped in a school that the slowest... You know, in, in the wild, we'll say the, the slowest gazelle does not survive, but yet the herd moves at that pace. So the brightest child sometimes is held back. Mr. And don't Speaker, we point feel of order. Uh, Jim may state his point of order. Okay, I'm, I'm hoping I wasn't the only one that got shocked by that comment that the only reason you went to Harvard is because you were black and an athlete. No, I did not say that. I said, would that, did that end up being one of the reasons? I do not know that. I asked okay. him this. Right. I asked him this. Okay, all right. I, I don't mind answering. Jim doesn't answer the question. Um, sorry, I was reading a note here, so I didn't hear what was well, I, I apologize, and I'll reframe. I'll reframe. Uh, Je- uh, I, I, the gentleman from Iredell is no longer recognized. Uh, for what purpose the lady from Wake, Representative Gill Rice? Uh, Representative Jones, do you still have the floor, sir, to debate? It's time to wrap up. The gentleman has the floor to wrap up his remarks. I, I, I just want to say that uh, I, I'm just going to say one thing. Harvard had five rankings for their students. One, two, three, four, five. And when I graduated from Harvard, I was in rank two. So I earned my place, and I did well. Woo! All right, y'all. Um, ooh. Okay, so later... The white racist who asked the question released this statement. I respect Representative Jones. I think he's a great legislator. I think he's a great man. What I tried to ask or say did not come out right. That happens a lot, and I apologize. North Carolina Representative Abe Jones joins us right now uh, from Raleigh. Um, Representative Jones, when this fool says, oh, it didn't come out right, that happens a lot, no, no, no. It came out exactly like you often say it, and we know exactly what happens because I think all of us have experienced that by from, by from some white bigots. You want me to respond? Oh, yes. Go right ahead. Well, Mr. McNeely um, shouldn't have said what he said. And... Uh, I took, I was offended, and I let them know that uh, I went to Harvard not on an athletic uh, scholarship, uh, as was implied by his statement, or because of my race, I went to Harvard based on my academic achievements, and I was uh, ranked pretty high when I came out of Harvard undergrad uh, at level two, which was uh, right below level one, which was the highest level. And uh, then I went on to Harvard Law School. So I was simply taking exception to him implying that I was simply there because I was an athlete and I was an athlete and that I um, was a minority and I'm a minority, obviously a black man. But that's not what got me in and that's certainly not what got me through and out 
and on to the law school. Well, here's the deal. You don't have to justify or explain away anything. And look, the reason I say we all been there, look, I, I've had, look, uh, whenever I'm flying or going somewhere and a lot of white folks see me wearing Texas A&M gear or they see this Texas A&M ring I have on, uh, they'll sit here uh, and go, uh, they'll, th th this is how they start. Oh, uh, did you play football? Hell no. Uh, I had one person say, um, um, uh, well, do, do you have a child? Who plays there? Hell no. Then they ask, are you a fan? No, dumbass, I'm a graduate. See, so a lot of, it, when they see somebody black going to a major school, it's, oh, you had to have played sports. That had to be how you got in. Yes. Yes. And, and I, uh, I did play a sport track cross country. Uh, but that's not how I got in. They, in fact, I, didn't, I don't even think they knew that I was in sports when I got in. I got in because I was in the National Honor Society and I had a very high average. And, and so they wanted me for my uh, scholarship, not because I was an athlete and uh, not because I was black. So um, that's, that was the point I tried to make and I did make it clearly and I, I resented what was said. However, I did accept Mr. McNeely's apology because I felt I wanted to be just as gracious and, and uh, forthcoming as he was. So I did, that was sincere, I accepted, he gave it, and I won't judge it. Uh, I simply said I accept it because I wanted to make it clear to my seatmates and my colleagues that um, I was ready to move on, and I am. Well, but I, Look, you way you way better than me. I mean, I, I I get the whole deal with accepting, but 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 let's be clear here. We're talking about a Republican Party that has done a significant uh, amount of work to disenfranchise Black folks. We have seen yeah. them with voter suppression. We've seen the voter ID. We've seen them with racial gerrymandering. Uh, we have seen them with a federal panel rule that was a laser-like pre precision. Uh, to target black folks uh, uh, when it comes to voting uh, in early voting. And so uh, it's not like the North Carolina Republican Party is a friend to black people. I, I agree with you on that. I, I think it's been a bad environment here uh, this year in particular. I think uh, more is to come. I expect that there are going to be some uh, voting requirements now that the Supreme Court, which shifted from Democrat to Republican in the last election in 2022 will now allow the legislature to set some rules about voter ID. And frankly, I, I'm ready, waiting on the voter ID requirements because I want the voter ID to be free since we can no longer challenge it because the Supreme Court, the big Supreme Court, has sent it all back to the state Supreme Court. And so we must fight on and make sure that the voting privilege and, and right of our people is protected. Uh, the atmosphere is now that it's open season that they, they can put in these requirements and we need to keep on struggling in the legislature. We're in, in, we in the minority, and, uh, but that doesn't mean we don't have a voice and a vote, and I plan to exercise mine. Uh, were his fellow Republicans embarrassed by what he said? Uh, yes, uh, I, I will say this, uh, uh, half dozen or more of them came to me privately and expressed concern and apologized for him, actually. So I, I did appreciate that. Yes, they were. Some were. And I suspect many were. Uh, because yes. Go ahead, I'm sorry. No, and, and I, I, I believe those were sincere and I took them as such. It uh, doesn't change the climate doesn't change the problem, but it, they did come to me and apologize in his behalf. Um, it, it, it is, it, it is the, the thing here uh, is that, uh, look, I say this all the time, we're living in a social media era where folks got phones and everything. Uh, many of these bigoted folks uh, are showing us exactly who they are with their comments. 
Uh, and, uh, and frankly, I've said this, that Donald Trump has opened the door for these folks to say whatever they want, do whatever they want, and the stuff that they have been said privately, they now say publicly uh, without any blowback whatsoever. Uh, I also saw a tweet from the head of the uh, North Carolina Republican Party, excuse me, Democratic Party, who said the last time this guy ran, uh, he ran unopposed. Uh, that's not going to happen next time. This, to me, is part of the problem why you have Republicans with a supermajority in North Carolina, a supermajority uh, in Tennessee, is because oftentimes they are running unopposed. In order to defeat these people, they must face opposition every single election. I don't disagree with that. I think that's absolutely true. Uh, and uh, we hope to feel someone in every district next time. I will say out in that area, however, when you drive through on the interstate, by the, by the main interstate 40, there's a big Confederate flag that flies at maybe someone's private property. But it kind of sends a message to you that you're in uh, a different sort of country. And I, I'm not trying to say everyone there feels that way, but that certainly that's flying by the highway. And so, But we still should fight, even in districts where we may be outnumbered, to send a message you just made. Uh, and I, I believe we will going forward. And I hope we will. We have, fight. we have to stand up even when the numbers don't favor us because we do have a voice. And it makes a difference because people like you will cover it and it'll be covered. And I believe that um, they have, I, I've ended my remarks this way uh, on another matter. Uh, the wind, they have sown, you've heard that expression, you sow the wind, you reap the whirlwind. Well, the wind has been sown and the whirlwind's coming. And I believe that the whirlwind will be in the form of our votes, and we must continue to be vigilant and to be strong. And that's what I plan to be. All right, folks, back to our Roll Mark Unfiltered video in just one moment. We talk about blackness and what happens in black culture. We're about covering these things that matter to us, uh, speaking to our issues and concerns. This is a genuine people powered movement. There's a lot of stuff that we're not getting. You get it, and you spread the word. We wish to plead our own cause to long have others spoken for us. We cannot tell our own story if we can't pay for it. This is about uh, covering us. Invest in Black-owned media. Your dollars matter. We don't have to keep asking them to cover our stuff. So please support us in what we do, folks. We want to hit 2,000 people, $50 this month, raise $100,000. We're behind 100000 so we want to hit that. Y'all money makes this possible. Checks and money orders go to P.O. Box 57196, Washington, D.C., 20037-0196. The cash app is dollar sign RM Unfiltered. PayPal is R Martin Unfiltered. Venmo is RM Unfiltered. Zelle is rolling at rollingsmartin.com. 